When you drive a quantum system described on finite size Hilbert space um, by an external perturbation, then it will react. And in the example that you see here, you have the numerical solution for the hydrogen atom based on a two-level system in an oscillating electromagnetic field, where then the electron starts to oscillate. And as a function of time, that oscillation gets larger and larger, or the amplitude of that oscillation is getting larger and larger. But after some time, you basically excited the S electron in the PZ orbital. And at that point, the oscillation stops. You have absorbed some amount of energy. But what then happens is a stimulated emission event where the P electron goes back to the S electron, such that after such a cycle, a Rabi oscillation, there is no energy absorbed in your system. And this is something that um, we've seen classically as well. If you have a system without damping and you drive it, it absorbs energy some part of the time, but then the other parts of the time, it gives that energy back to the driving field, such that over time there is no energy absorbed in your system. Um, this is not only so for the example that you see here, but it is something generally valid. And we can actually already see that in the way we calculated our susceptibilities. If we have our Hamiltonian, which is H0 plus some interaction, and let's say I have a field, an electrical field can be a vector and an operator, so a dipole moment in the x, y, and z direction times the field strength in the x, y, and z direction times an oscillating strength. Then we can define the susceptibility, which now has six or three components for the incoming and three components for the outgoing light or the bra and the get state. It's a function of frequency. We have psi zero, OI, where O has three components, X, Y, and Z, one over H bar omega minus H0 plus E0 minus 1 over H bar omega plus H0 minus E0 and then OJ psi 0 where I and J can be the X, Y and Z component of that vector such that you can have a polarized light in there. Now the operator that we see here, when O is equal to J, is a Hermitian operator. Um, what we have here, the Hamiltonian is Hermitian, such that the expectation value of our susceptibility is pure real. If we then look at the conductivity of omega, this is minus I omega times the susceptibility. Then the conductivity is purely imaginary. And if we then look at the absorption, which is the real part of the conductivity, and we can now take the electrical field times sigma times the electrical field divided by the norm of that field, then this is exactly zero for a susceptibility that is completely real. Now, classically, we have, of course, the same form of the susceptibility. And classically, we included a friction. And the friction force is proportional to minus m gamma times the velocity of the particle. And adding such a friction then gives you an imaginary part to your susceptibility. Now, quantum mechanically, you can simply also add that imaginary part to your susceptibility. Um, then the susceptibility becomes complex. Your conductivity also gets a real part and you have absorption. This turns out to be indeed the correct solution, 
But of course, it's not really satisfactory to just add some complex number in there because you know that you then get the right solution. Even though we know that classically this is well funded and should be the solution, um, you want to drive this consistently within quantum mechanics. So let's see how we can understand dissipation in a quantum system. And in order to get absorption, we need an infinite basis. And there are two ways that we actually can go to an infinite basis. We can either say instead of coupling to a single state, we couple to a band. Or we can say we still couple to a single state. But then this excited state couples to a band. We will show you both derivations and show you that you get an, of an imaginary part in your susceptibility and both cases are actually mathematically equivalent. They describe exactly the same physics, although at the point it might still look um, somewhat different. Either your state couples to many states um, that are in a finite interval and dense, or you couple to one state that then couples to many other states. Um, that sounds like a different physical picture, but actually what we'll show, this is exactly the same mathematics and exactly the same physical picture that you have and gives you absorption. So let's have a look at the first example where we couple to a band. Now when you couple to a band, there is a minimum energy of the band and a maximum energy of the band. You have some densities of states in your system and different states can have a different coupling constant. Uh, I want to show you a simple model example um, where we get absorption and then you can make it as realistic uh, later on. So I'm going to do a simple example. And I'm going to assume a constant dos, a constant density of states, and a constant coupling. It's not so hard to change either of the two. So our Hamiltonian is given by a sum i is 1 to n, and we're going to take the limit of n to infinite, and we have resonators at energy omega i. And omega i is omega max minus omega min times i over n plus omega min. So it's that we run from the minimum energy to the maximum energy. And when n goes to infinite, you have a density of states that is constant. Well, if you define this slightly different, you can build any densities of states that you like. Then we have our coupling Hamiltonian that makes the excitation. And this we're going to take as a constant coupling between state i and state 0. And let's assume that this coupling is real such that I don't have to take complex conjugates here. Now, when you double the amount of states, um, the coupling here will become twice as strong. So we have to make sure that we normalize our coupling realistically, and we have to normalize it with the square root of 1 over n. Um, if you double the number of states, uh, if you half the interval of states, um, you can think of these states are quantized because they are in a box, 
if you make your box twice as big, you get twice as many states. But then the normalization is such that also the overlap at the side is going down. And that is exactly the square root of 1 over n that you get in here. So there is a good physical reason to have exactly this normalization of your coupling constant with n. Now with this we can calculate our susceptibility as the limit of comma to zero plus mu square the integral omega min to omega max 1 over omega minus omega prime plus i comma over 2 minus 1 over omega plus omega prime plus i comma over 2 d omega prime whereby I've added some small imaginary part to make sure that all our branch cuts are well defined and we know where the poles are when we do this integration Now if you perform this integration, then you find <coughs> that this is the limit of comma to zero plus, and we get two logarithms of four omega min squared plus comma minus two omega i squared minus the logarithm for omega max squared plus comma minus 2i omega squared. We can make a plot of chi 1 of omega as a function of omega. There we have 0. If we look at the real in the imaginary part, then we find that the imaginary part is constant between omega min and omega max with a value of minus pi mu squared. And the same is true for negative frequencies where we go from minus omega max to minus omega min with a value of pi mu squared. Now we have also a real part. That behaves as 1 over omega outside. And is nicely symmetric um, having kinks at the border of your densities of states at the band minimum and band maximum. But importantly, we find that our susceptibility now has a finite imaginary part such that the conductivity has a real part and we have absorption. So once you define a band, you indeed get an imaginary part where the poles of your single resonances are, which now become a density of poles with a finite uh, imaginary part that is left over. And this then allows you to get absorption and dissipation. Well, because you have infinite states, there's a memory loss. You can go to all the different states and you never come back because, well, you're spread out over all possible states that you have in your system. Now, instead of directly coupling to infinitely many states, um, which would happen in a band system, uh, where you have a metal or you have some continuum to which you couple and you couple each state in that continuum, we can also couple to a single state specific. And we know that a hydrogen atom absorbs, so let's see how we can understand that, this couple to a single state. But that state can decay.
or as I said, that state couples to infinitely many other states. And again, let's not derive this completely general, but just show you how this works for a simple example. And I'm gonna simplify a few things. I'm gonna look at a hydrogen atom in an electromagnetic field, and I'm gonna make a few simplifications on the electromagnetic field. So I'm gonna assume a hydrogen atom with a 1s and a 2p state. I'm gonna neglect that light has a polarization. If you wish, you can think of z polarized light and the p orbital then is the pz orbital. And I'm also gonna neglect the k vector of the light. That's of course slightly problematic because I have to quantize and you normally quantize in the momentum, but I'm gonna quantize in energy instead. Now I know that's not correct. It gives you incorrect densities of states. It doesn't all matter. I'm just wanna go through the basic principle and then we'll, you'll be able to make this um, more realistic. Um, later on, once you've understood what the steps are that you need to take. And this just simplifies all my equations. Now let's have a look at the basis that we need to include. Now, previously we said we have a crowd state wave function that is the 1s and we excite to the 2p. And the electric field was basically treated as a classical field. Now let's include the photons in our basis. So psi zero is the state that we have before we do an absorption. So in order to make an absorption, we have to have the electron in the 1s orbital, but we also have to have a photon present. So this is the electron in the 1s, and a photon with energy h bar omega, so in state omega. Now we can make an absorption. And at that moment we are left with the electron in the 2p orbital. There is no photon anymore. Now, once you have an electron in a 2p orbital, um, it can emit a photon. It can couple, in principle, to any state with a photon plus a 1s electron. So we have a continuum of states, which I will call psi zero h bar omega e, which is given as an electron and a state with photon with energy omega e. Now omega e does not need to be the energy difference between the 1s and the 2p orbital. Two states with a different energy can definitely interact with each other. So the 1s state plus a photon of a certain energy definitely interacts with the 2p state. And that will give rise to a mixing. Very much like in quantum mechanics when you have for electronic states, when you have two atomic orbitals or molecular orbitals at different energy and you have an interaction between them, that makes a bonding and an anti-bonding state. So we have a complete set of states where we have an S electron plus a photon, a continuous set, and we have the state where we have the 2p electron. Then psi zero is of course element of this one, but is special because that is the state we start from. Now as um, this is an infinite dense set, it doesn't matter that we have one state double in there. We can of course exclude it, but it's not even needed. The overlap per state in the end is gonna go to zero, but the overlap density is not, or the transition density is not.
Now let's say that the energy of state i plus 1 minus the energy of state i is delta omega e. And we now take as our dipole moment between the two states equal to some function which is the dipole moment and then we have the square root of delta omega e. Again we need this to make sure that everything stays normalized when we do our integrals um, but there is also a good reason, a physical reason for this if you think of a box in which your photons sit um, and then they are quantized which of course is what we assumed here so they can go up in steps if you make your box twice as large, then just by the normalization of the wave function, the overlap of the wave function locally at the atom scales with the square root of the step size between the energies that you have as quantization in your box. Now we can calculate the linear susceptibility of this system. And if we would not couple to the additional states, then this is just the linear susceptibility of our two-level system. So this is chi 1 of omega, which is mu of omega squared. And then we have 1 over omega minus omega 0 minus 1 over omega plus omega 0. Now our excited state couples to another set which is outside the Hilbert space. And what we have seen before when we discussed Green's functions, if a single state couples to a set of other states, that then again couple, if a single state couples to a single state, that then again couples to a set of other states. If you then invert that matrix and look at its first element, then the coupling to the other states enter as a self-energy. So we get here a self-energy sigma plus of omega plus sigma minus of omega. And we can now calculate that self-energy sigma plus minus of omega is plus minus the limit of gamma to zero plus integral of zero to infinite. You have to integrate over all possible photon energies. It doesn't matter if you're unresonant or not. It doesn't matter if it's smaller or larger than the amount of energy that you have available you can couple to those states so they might mix. Mu square omega i and then 1 over omega minus plus omega e plus i gamma over 2. All poles must be in the lower half complex plane because we do want to have a causal uh, response function. Now, the notion that we have here, um, well, if your coupling constant is roughly constant in energy, which for the hydrogen atom is, then this becomes a constant. So what you find here is that chi 1 of omega has a real and imaginary part, and its imaginary part is given by a Lorentzian centered around omega zero. Touch that again, the conductivity has a real part and you have an absorption. Now if we compare the two scenarios, then if for the scenario we would have taken a density of states which is everywhere and roughly constant which is what we assumed here but then assumed a coupling constant that scales as a Lorentzian and peaks at a certain energy then this is exactly what you would have found and you can then reproduce the single resonance with a continuum set of states other way around, if you would have diagonalized the Hamiltonian 
on the basis of an S electron plus a photon and a P electron and all the interactions between them, you would have seen that the state with pure P electron is not an eigenstate because it couples to states with an electron in the S orbital and a photon. The eigenstates are linear combinations of those two. They slightly shift in energy depending on the energy of the photon that you mix in and therefore you have a set of eigenstates and that again then gives you the picture where you couple to an infinite set of states at different energies. So these two pictures are completely mathematically equivalent depending on which part of your Hamiltonian do diagonalize first and how you look at your system. Do you look at the system as I start from a state, then I couple to it, then I get to a particular state and I look how that state decays in the continuum? Or do you say I have a set of states that I diagonalize, then I look how another state couples to those eigenstates and therefore I couple to a continuum? Um, it's the order in which you do things. But that's pure mathematics and something you choose and not something that is different in the nature of the system that you describe. So with that, uh, I hope to have shown you how to include dissipation in real quantum systems. You do get back to a form that is very similar or equivalent to the uh, classical case. Even your self-energy has both a real and an imaginary part, which then gives rise to a shift of the resonance frequency which in the quantum or any classical case you also found. So for now, thank you very much for your attention. Stay healthy. We see each other later.